everyone i am your teacher for the day today we are going to discuss the chapter latitudes and longitudes in this chapter we are going to learn about the axes and the poles latitudes and important latitudes heat zones longitudes and time standard time and local time and time zones and international date line so children we have studied that the earth is spherical in nature and is bulging at the center and flattened at the poles so this representation can be best shown through a globe we have earlier discussed about the globes so the globe we say is a 3d representation of the earth on this globes we have various types of imaginary lines drawn so that we can show the position or location of a place properly so these lines imaginary lines they help us to show the location or position of a particular place properly exactly on a globe so the first important line that we are having is the axis it is the line which passes through the center of the earth and it has its two end points one is the north pole and the second is the south pole and this line is that imaginary line on which the earth rotates in 24 hours this line makes an angle of 23 and a half degrees with the horizontal plane of the earth so this line is very important at as as it shows the rotation of the earth around itself so another important line that we are having on the surface of the earth is the equator this line is exactly halfway on the surface of the earth that means it divides the earth into two equal parts or hemispheres that is the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere and in these hemispheres we can see the top of the northern hemisphere as the north pole and the extreme end of the southern hemisphere as the south pole so children another set of imaginary lines which we are having on the surface of the earth which we have drawn because these are imaginary they are latitudes these latitudes run from west to east and they are parallel to each other as well as they are parallel to the equator also so children another set of imaginary lines which we are going to show you is the longitudes these longitudes run from north pole to the south pole that means they run from north to south and they are of equal length so children both these lines when combined together they form a network of lines that we call as a grid and this grid is helpful in locating the places and showing the direction of different places these latitudes as well as longitudes they cut each other at right angles so the point of intersection of these two latitudes and longitudes give us the exact position of a particular place so children this is how the imaginary lines drawn on the globe they help us to understand about the perfect location or the exact position of a particular place so now we'll discuss the latitudes in details so what do we call a latitude now a latitude is the set of imaginary line which run from west to east direction these lines are parallel to each other so how do we define we will say that equator is an important latitude which is at 0 degrees we mark it as 0 degrees this is the central parallel also and these imaginary lines they are all parallel to the equator that means they don't meet anywhere they are parallel they run parallel to the equator as well as parallel to each other so we can say the latitude of a place is the angular distance of a place north or south of the equator so children these latitudes when we see we take zero as the equator and from zero to the 90 degrees to the northern pole or to the southern poles they are 90 in number 
that means 0 to 90 in the northern side and 0 to 90 in the southern side. So children, when we add up together, all of them make 181 in number. That means 90 in the northern side, 90 in the southern side and 1 for the equator. So these latitudes, we measure them in degrees and these latitudes, they, the circle, the circumference or the length of the latitudes, they goes on decreasing and decreasing. That means biggest at the equator, then it goes on decreasing till at an end point at the North Pole as well as the South Pole. Why is it so? Because of the spherical nature of the Earth. So if you see a ball also, you can see the circumference goes on decreasing, decreasing to, till the end point. So children, these latitudes, we say equator is the important latitude, it's the zero degree latitude. So we take it as a reference point for other latitudes. So apart from this equator, we have various other important latitudes like the Tropic of Cancer, that is 23 and a half degrees north, Tropic of Capricorn, that is 23 and a half degrees south. We have Arctic Circle, 66 and a half degrees north, and Antarctic Circle, that is 66 and a half degrees south. Why do we mark these latitudes? Because, children, you see, on the surface of Earth, we don't have the same kind of climate. There's a difference in heat, there's a difference in the temperature, there's a difference in the climatic conditions. So, depending upon the availability of heat or intensity of heat, what we do, we classify or we divide the earth into three important heat zones. So the first heat zone which we are having is the torrid zone. So this zone, as you can see, this lies between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So this lies between the two tropics, they are nearer to the equator and these regions, the regions which are there or the zone, this zone, this receives the direct amount of sunlight or it receives the direct heat, vertical rays of the sun. That means it receives maximum amount of heat. So this region, this zone is having very hot climate. So moving on to the next one, that is the temperate zones. When we talk of temperate zones, we have two temperate zones because one is in the northern side and the other is in the southern side. So the northern temperate zone, it lies between the Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle. And the second one, that is the southern temperate zone, this lies between the Antarctic Circle and the Tropic of Capricorn. So these two zones, as we can see the angle, we can see the curvature of the earth, these two zones receive the slanting rays of the sun. And when the rays are slanting, heat received is less. So this region receives less heat as compared to the torrid zone. So the climatic conditions here are not, the climate is neither too hot nor too cold. So children, now we come up to the third one, the third zone that we call as frigid zone. And this frigid zone, it lies in both the hemispheres, in the northern hemisphere from Arctic Circle to the North Pole, in the southern hemisphere from Antarctic Circle to the South Pole. These two zones, as you can see, they are more curvy. So that's why they receive extremely slanting rays of the sun. So what is the impact of that? The heat received is very much less and when we receive less heat, what happens? This region remains cold. So this region remains cold throughout the year and the climate condition of this place we can say are cold. It's very cold climate. You have the polar regions, the polar ice caps over here where we have freezing temperatures, ice born areas. These are located in the frigid zone. So children, this was about the latitudes, the importance of these latitudes and the three different heat zones. So children, we have learned about the latitudes. Now we are going to learn about longitudes. So what are longitudes? They are another set of imaginary lines which are drawn from north to south. 
that means from north pole to south pole and they are of equal length so when we have equator as the reference point for the latitudes here we take one meridian or longitude as the reference point and we call it prime meridian so this prime meridian passes through the royal observatory greenwich london and it has been decided by all the countries to consider it as the zero degree longitude and it has been named as prime meridian so we can say the longitude of a place is the angular distance east or west of the prime meridian so this meridian is being taken as the zero degree meridian and it divides the earth into two hemispheres or two equal parts that is the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere an important thing about these longitudes is that they are of equal length so when we start from zero degree longitude or prime meridian we have 180 in the eastern hemisphere and 180 in the western hemisphere so in all we have 360 longitudes so children these longitudes <clears throat> when we see they are very far away near the equator but as we move from the equator towards the poles the distance goes on decreasing till they meet at a point that is north pole and south pole so these longitudes they are also important why because with the help of longitudes we are able to calculate the time so children as you all see in all the countries we have different timings so the timing the calculation of this timing can be done according to the position of the sun and the earth and the sun they both keep on changing their position why because of the rotation of the earth around its axis so this results in the difference in timings the earth rotates from west to east that's why sun rises in the east and sets in the west the earth takes 24 hours or one day to complete one full rotation of 360 degrees so the earth rotates about 15 degrees in one hour or one degree in four minutes the prime meridian or greenwich meridian has been taken as the standard meridian for all the countries of the world so whenever it's noon time at the greenwich meridian so all the places on that meridian will be having the same time so the places which are to the east of greenwich they are ahead of the greenwich time and the places which are in the western side they are behind or lagging behind the timing of the greenwich meridian so let's take an example for this calculation if the timing at the greenwich meridian is 12 noon what will be the time at 30 degrees east and 30 degrees west longitude so firstly we'll calculate the difference the time between 0 degree and 30 degrees that will be 30 into 4 that is 120 minutes or 2 hours so when we talk about 30 degrees east what we have to do we have to add these two hours that means 12 plus 2 that is 2 pm and when we talk about 30 degrees west we have to subtract the two hours why because it's in the western direction of the greenwich so it is 12 minus 2 that is 10 am so children this is how we calculate the timing for a particular place so now talking about the local time and the standard time the time of a particular area depends upon its longitudes all the places on the same latitude will have same timing this is called local time of that particular meridian or longitude the word meridian means midday this signifies the sun's position at the noon time so am stands for anti meridian or before noon and pm stands for post meridian or afternoon so for a vast country if we see we have various longitudes so the local time will vary from one longitude to another longitude 
as we know for every degree of longitude there will be a difference of four minutes so it will create a chaos because we have to reach to certain destinations on time but when the time is different when the time is varying it will be different so to avoid this confusion this chaos what we do we select a particular meridian and on that meridian we select a particular place and the time of that place we take as the standard time of a country like for india we take allahabad city's time as the standard time of india and the meridian that passes there that is 82 and half degrees east we call it as the standard meridian of india so the timing at that particular place at allahabad is taken as the standard time for india and as we know allahabad is towards the eastern side of greenwich mean time so what we say that this standard time of india is ahead of greenwich mean time and how much after calculation it's five and a half hours so we say that the timing of india is five and half hours ahead of gmt so children now we'll be learning about time zones as you know the time is decided by a longitude so certain countries are vast they have a greater extent so they have many longitudes passing through them so it's not possible to have one standard time so the earth has been divided into 24 time zones so that giving the duration of one hour the whole earth completes the rotation in 24 hours so the main longitude that passes through each time zone gives us the standard time of that meridian so the countries which are vast like russia canada they have various time zones like russia has 11 time zones canada has six time zones and usa has five time zones so children this was about time zones now we have our last topic that is international date line when we talk of longitudes the 180 degree meridian that is opposite to the zero degrees is called as international date line this line is not a straight line it is an imaginary line it is drawn zigzag why so as to accommodate the oceans the landforms on both the sides so children this international date line gives us another reference point when we talk about the longitudes and when we move towards the west we add a day and when we move towards the east of it we subtract a day so children hope you have enjoyed learning this lesson that's all for today thank you Thank you.